Marie knew the famous artist Edgar Degas in real life when she was a very young woman. She was dancing ballet in Paris, and he hired her as a model at ages 11 to 14. After that time, she disappeared from history, but the models he constructed of clay, wax, and other materials did not. In fact, some of those were made into bronze sculptures after Degas passed on. And a museum copy of one of them was acquired by the artist Peter Stilton last summer from an antique dealer in Maine. The shop was full of European and English antiques, and the kindly gentleman who sold her to Peter could have been in Lewis Carroll's books about Alice. When she was placed on the dining room table in the artist's house in Down East Maine, she was somehow very much at home, perhaps because the house was from the time she danced in Paris. Peter began photographing her in the New England farmhouse for his painted photographs that he was working on. When the autumn leaves had fallen to the ground, he put her in the car with his wife, one son, and the two huge Great Dane puppies, and drove to the house and studio in Florida. My, thought Marie, Alice may have gone down a rabbit hole, but here I am in the trunk of a car with no one to talk to. When she was placed in one of the dining areas in the artist's house in Florida, she realized she was no longer the mistress of the house. There was so much art and other sculptures. There were all the whimsical animals created by Peter's mother, Liz Fuller. There were the African figures in wood. And, of course, the hundred-year-old limestone Italian statues in the garden. And there were so many people living in the house, too, besides the four-and-a-half cats and the ever-growing Great Danes. If I don't keep my head above all the commotion and collections, I will surely be left in a corner, and no one will even notice me. That doesn't really bother me, but I do like meeting people, after all. Paris was full of interesting people. I love all the flowers in the garden here, and I see some antique stone statues. I love the flowers. They make me think of the pastels Degas used to depict me and the other ballerinas. From her place on the glass table, she could see, right in front of her, the shepherd and shepherdess with the face of an androgynous Dionysus next to the duck. She watched all day and could see the Great Danes running like horses around the statues and boxwood topiary in the garden. At night, floodlights lit up the statues and flowers near the house, and the twisted tallow trees from China stretched their branches in a rather oriental way. I do wonder if I shall ever meet the other sculptures in the house and the statues out there in the garden, she asked herself. Then she realized that she could walk or dance when the household was asleep. Perhaps she was only dreaming, because when anyone got up, she was immediately back on the glass table, not able to move. But she was content to have a home and to be admired by the French lady, Lily, who was from Paris and lived in the house. It seemed that she was the only figure that could move. The others, wood, ceramic, stone, or metal, were unable to do so, but they could talk. Her first conversation was with Shakespeare, who shared the glass table. Alors, she said to Mr. Shakespeare, you are the famous playwright, oui? Oh, yes, mademoiselle, I am called the bard. Vraiment, why is that? because I tell stories that involve actors on the stage, and I use the English language in, in all its richness and power. That has earned me an important place in the history of the English-speaking world. I never learned to read. My mother was a laundress, and I had no opportunity to go to school. That doesn't mean you can't appreciate my poetry. Let me begin this poem. Shall I compare thee to a summer day? Thou art more lovely. How sweet! I'll bet you have met many beautiful ladies. Well, I have, but there's something about you. You move like a dancer, 
or, Ah, but I was, and I too have a small place in history, because a famous artist, Degas, made drawings of me. But you must excuse me, as I see a rabbit in the garden waving to me, and I must see what he wants. In an instant, she was out in the garden in front of a rather impressive rabbit. She sensed that he had a kind of official status in the garden, like the white rabbit that Alice met. How odd, she thought. Alice fell down a hole, and I had a long journey in the trunk of a car. But we both ended up talking to a rabbit. Bonjour, Monsieur Lepin. That's French for rabbit. Comment ça va? Pardon, mademoiselle, I am Merton, an American rabbit, although I do speak some Italian that the statues here have taught me. Oh, I understand English, but I've never talked to a rabbit before. I am somewhat in charge of the statue actors in the garden, but Shakespeare will guide you in the house. Let me just say that you are going to be very surprised at the statues and sculptures you will be living with. Some are very funny, and others are more serious. Unfortunately, one of the Great Danes in the house heard something and began barking deep and loud, like a tuba or French horn. In an instant, she was back on the glass table next to Shakespeare. Then it began to rain, and while Shakespeare started to recite something about the gentle rain, Marie knew she was going to have many adventures in her new home in Florida, and both Merton, the rabbit, and Shakespeare were going to become very close friends. <laughs>